These are the Zoom mic track microphone and field recorders. Hi everyone, my name is Ross and I'm with Global Fire Creative and Wex and I'm really pleased to be talking to you today about Zoom's product range of stereo microphone and field recorders, mic track. So all of these units have a very rich feature set. They have some very key differences, but they also have some key things in common. So let's start with those. All of them are able to record locally to a micro SD card. All of them are able to run over AA batteries for a staggeringly long amount of time, or with an optional power supply. Quite impressively, you're able to use all of these devices as an audio interface into your laptop, your desktop, and in some cases, even into your mobile device. With all these units with the built-in microphones, you're able to capture in stereo or mono. One of the most impressive things that all these units have in common is that they can record at a 32-bit floating point. Now, in layman's terms, what this means is you can record in almost any situation and not worry about clipping. Now, I'm not really a let's fix it in the mix, let's fix it in post kind of guy. I like to get it right on the way in. Sometimes you might be a self-shooter, you don't have a dedicated sound guy. Um, other times, just things happen in your environment. And so the ability to know that you can rain that back and not get any clipping and sort that out is just absolute peace of mind. And at this price point, is incredible. So let's start with the M2 mic track. M2, standing for two-track audio recorder. It does have a XY stereo microphone configuration. So let's see what's in the box. I love that they all come in this cardboard box, no plastic in sight. It comes with a um, pop shield, windshield kind of hood on top, which is removable, but a really nice feature for when people are breathing or maybe it's windy. You see that just pops off. Mic clip is included. So straight out of the box, one thing I loved about this unit before I even turn it on was this dial at the back, the battery release dial. So if we turn this, there's no chance that this battery pack is going to come undone unless you do this, which means you're really, really safe and you're operational. So we release, release the toggle, got two AA batteries. Now Zoom said that you get a staggering 11 hours of operation with two, double ba two AA batteries, which is absolutely staggering, especially when you think back to uh, the battery life in some of the older um, field recorders that we're all used to. Micro SD card, powering up. So the main thing I loved about this unit is straight out of the box, I can record straight away. There was hardly anything to think about. We're creators, we don't really read these things, do we? Now I'm sure they're useful, but if you're anything like me, when you get a new toy, you just want to get going with it. Such simplicity in its functions. It's got very simple buttons on the front. We can very simply go from mono to stereo recording. We can very simply just put our low cut filter on. Big fat record button here in the middle. We can hit that to use record. We can also repeat press it during a recording to make markers. So let's try this thing out. I'm going to stick the mic on the included mic clip. Attach it to our mic stand. It has a standard thread that you'll all recognize. So I'm now going to record some audio in a stereo mode. So this is an audio clip from the M2 mic track field recorder microphone in mono. And this is an audio example of the M2 mic track field recorder microphone recording in stereo. A great application for this would also be using this for interviews, maybe for speak for speaking. And as you can hear that the uh, the noise of the noise from holding the microphone is actually quite minimal. The M2 mic track employs an XY stereo pair of microphones suspended in a standard handheld microphone for shock mount functionality. Both stereo and mono modes are available. The device can record at a 32-bit floating point and is capable of acting as an audio interface to your PC, Mac, iOS or Android device. When used as an audio interface, it will operate at 24-bit with a fixed 48 kilohertz sample rate. The M2 is powered by a pair of AA batteries which provide up to 11 hours of operation. 
there is also an optional power supply. So next up we have the Zoom M3 mic track. Now this is more of a uh, shotgun mic designed to be mounted on cameras, although you can mount it on a boom pole or any other um, kind of stand with a thread that you uh, desired. Once again, cardboard box, I just know from the side, this package is designed exclusively with recycled cardboard, no plastic bags, styrofoam, or petroleum-based materials are included. Nice one, Zoom. Love that. Mini TRS jack cable to plug into our DSLR, a mirrorless camera, or other. We have our microphone, recorder, and we also have our shock mount, which is perfect for mounting on cameras, etc. So on the face of it, even though it looks very different, this has many of the same feature set as his cousin, the M2. We have, our, we have our headphone out so we can monitor the direct recorded sound. We have our volume buttons up and down. We have our power. We have the ability to change between mono and stereo, but also change the stereo width from 90 to 120 uh, degrees, which is really cool. Uh, there is the lack of a uh, display screen on this one. I assume just because of the form factor of it and the fact that it's generally going to be up on a camera or a boom pole. We do have a low cut button. We do have a, a play and stop button so we can quickly monitor our, rec our recordings after they've been recorded. Uh, our, our actual record button, very important. And we do have our mini uh, TRS jack output so that we can run that into a camera or any other type of recording device. Now with the output there, I would personally just see that as like a backup option um, because I would want to get the quality audio that's been recorded in here um, as opposed to uh, if you're using the jack out then you're doing like a digital to analog conversion um, via a mini cable back into camera converting it from analog back to digital um, that's a whole load of processing I don't really want on my files um, to kind of affect the sound in any way. Uh, that might be fine for you. Um, personally, I would like to, uh, I would just run that feed into my camera as a reference or back, and it's also a great backup recording. A simple clip at the bottom. Again, two AA batteries, staggering length of uh, time. On the back here, we can plug in our micro SD card. I'm deliberately, the first time I'm doing this is on camera because I want you guys to see just how easy these are to figure out. Zoom really have made this stuff to work out the box. So if you're, if you're a professional audio engineer, camera guy, sound guy, or if you're new to this, within minutes you're, you'll be off, you're going. We do have the standard cold tube mount so we can mount on the camera. And there is also, in the end here, there is also a small mini thread so you would be able to use that with the right adapter or spigot onto a boom pole, onto a stand, a clamp, um, anywhere. So what I love about this setup is it's very nostalgic for me. Uh, many years ago when the whole DSLR small form factor cinema photography um, revolution was happening and suddenly, suddenly guys like me were using uh, cameras like Canon 5Ds for, for video because we simply weren't able to use, get that kind of look with those kind of lenses at that price point before. And those earlier cameras really struggled much more than now uh, for audio features. They didn't always have inputs. They certainly didn't have great headphone outputs. Um, they, they often didn't even have audio meters. So even though you could get a half decent picture, sound was much more of a challenge, unlike cameras, mirrorless cameras and um, and the like that we used to today. And so I've got very nostalgic memories of using my old 5D and 7D with an actual Zoom field recorder on top. Um, they, were, they, were, they got there very quickly with the industry. So it's so cool to see that Zoom are just keeping ahead of the curve even now and being innovative and still helping us guys out with these great solutions. So yeah, just a little chip down memory lane for me there. So we'll take our mini jack into our mic, next one into our camera and now we've got good reference audio, 
good backup recording, use it as your primary audio if you want. But yeah, we have the ability to take that out there and get that into our main camera or device, whatever that is. So let's power this up. We can turn on our low cut, simple one LED light again. And what's super cool about this is the ability to um, actually um, record the whole spectrum and then in post we can actually white choose how wide or narrow we want that field uh, after recording. Like I said earlier, I like to get it right on the way in, but this kind of additional functionality does give you more options and it's also fantastic. For example, if you were recording some dialogue and then switching to more of a kind of establishing or B-roll shot and then cutting back to your subject, the ability to um, widen and narrow down that width is something I've not really seen in one microphone before. So I'm really excited to have a play around with that. Let's hit record. Just one red LED light here and we're recording. I'm gonna hold this at a kind of similar distance to what you might be for a close-up shot. So now we are listening to the Zoom M3 mic track microphone field recorder in mono. And now we are hearing the Zoom M3 mic track microphone field recorder at 90 degree stereo. And now we are listening to the M3 mic track stereo microphone field recorder in stereo 120 degrees. In summary, the M3 mic track is designed to be mounted on a camera, although it can easily be mounted on a boom pole or any other stand with the right adapter. The microphone is fitted with a shock mount which helps to minimize the transmission of unwanted noise. And in addition to the standard left-right operation, the device also offers support for mid-side recording, providing users the flexibility of adjusting the stereo width of their recordings during the post-production. The M3 is capable of acting as an audio interface for a PC or Mac and will retain its 32-bit functionality. The M3 is capable of acting as an audio interface for a PC or Mac and will retain its 32-bit functionality. I have had a lot of fun checking out these devices and I'm really excited to share with you the third and final of the three units, the M4 mic track. Four track field and music recorder. So this is great for out and about as a field recorder, but also has other applications which we'll get into. So let's open the box and see what's inside. Okay, so on the face of it, you can see that this is got a similar form factor to the M2 could be used as a handheld recorded device. We have our stereo XY microphones up here. Again, suspended, protected. Um, it does come with a, a windshield, pop shield that we can pop over the top as well. So that's fantastic. But as you notice, these bad boys on the side, we have two high quality um, combi inputs. So these can be used for XLR for, um, and also for a proper balance TRS jacks. We have the addition of a small mini jack input so we can take a feed from something else, a little mixer, etc. cetera. And, um, but here's where it gets exciting as well. In addition, to being, in addition to being able to use it as an audio interface to the others, and so this will be a four track audio interface, which is really cool. Um, we also have a, a line out. We have the ability to remote control it. Um, the standard headphone outs um, and also time code in and out. This is cool. This is a game changer when it comes to pro video production to be able to time lock with other cameras and other devices and really, really get you into a kind of pro level time locked production, post production workflow. So, like the M2, this one does have the locking thumb screw at the back for locking the battery compartment so you know they're not going to come out during recording. We do have the uh, USB C that can be used to power it. And um, the micro SD card slot at the side. So on the screen here, you can see we have the four different quadrants which represent our four different tracks. Uh, the two of which on the top are default to the internal mics. If you're set to stereo, you'll switch to one quadrant if you go to mono. And then the other two can be assignable to your various different inputs. So you can set these to line level or mic level, and it also can do phantom power to the two external microphones as well. Just like the M2, super simple in operation. We can easily switch between our inputs. We can easily add our low cut filter, our record, 
playback. It does have a small speaker built in, so you can just check that you've got audio and reference that that's actually there. We've listened to a couple of these devices already and they sound absolutely fantastic. Really clear, really punchy, 32-bit float, headroom, just to die for if you want good quality sound. What's interesting about these units is they can be used for so much more than that. One of the main features for the Zoom M4 is that it is a multi-track recorder and sounding device and great for other things like music. So here at Global Fire Studios, I decided to put it for its paces and put it in a few different situations to see what it, can what it sounds like and how it works. I set it up in our small live room with Josh on the drums and plugged in a couple of uh, condenser microphones into the side inputs. Even with phantom power, I was amazed that I didn't really see the battery dip at all. Um, it really held on great. And so we used the, the stereo XY microphones as well as the um, two microphones plugged into the inputs to get a great mix. And then also plugged it into the computer as an audio interface and recorded some additional elements into it to see how, see how smooth that would be, how well it worked. And here's some of the results. So all in all, I think these units are fantastic. They are real Swiss army knives that would really get you out of a lot of spots. So many applications um, targeted at different areas of production, but they all do more than what you kind of see on the surface. I can, there's so many different applications you could use them for. The options to use them straight into your computer is absolutely fantastic. Um, which one would I buy? Probably all of them. Um, I can see times where all of these would be really, really useful. Um, be interesting to know which one you guys want to buy and why. Um, I think the M2 is a fantastic choice if you don't need extra inputs and um, you're doing interviews and podcasts or singing and, and, and other kind of just one or two sources. I think the camera, the M3 camera mic is absolutely fantastic for mounting on cameras or on a boom pole. So many great applications with that. The flexibility to kind of narrow or widen the stereo image in post is, is amazing and quite groundbreaking. And then if you really want an absolute film production, music production, Swiss army knife, M4 is just fantastic. To be able to have um, pro features like time code, in and out, multi-track recording, phantom power, uh, using it as your audio device, you really could have this in your bag and use it for so many different things. So yeah, thanks for listening. I really hope you got something out of it. Please leave your comments below. Um, we'd love to, we would love to hear your thoughts on these mics, if you've bought them, what you've used them for. Uh, if you're going to buy one, then please tell us what you're, think what you're thinking of getting and why, and uh, look forward to seeing you again.